Is Jeffrey Dahmer in heaven? This is the question that people are asking this week. Ever since the docudrama dropped on Netflix about Jeffrey Dahmer, Christians and non-Christians alike have been obsessing over this guy. And numerous videos from Christian content creators have come out talking about whether or not he came to faith in his last days. Today, I'm gonna to respond to some of the conversation around this topic. You're gonna to wanna to stay tuned. Let's go to the studio. Quick warning, Christian TikTok is currently celebrating Jeffrey Dahmer being in heaven in case you don't want to see that. What if I told you that serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer became a Christian while he was in prison and went to heaven when he died? Is Jeffrey Dahmer in heaven? If it offends you that Jeffrey Dahmer professed his faith in Jesus Christ, maybe you don't realize how big of a sinner you are as well. Sin is sin. A lie is just as much of a sin as murder. Lies. Oh, that's actually good. That's actually a good point there. Hey, you know, hey, well, by what standard? You know, if you're judging by your own standard, you, you don't think you're that big of a sinner. But according to God's standard, man, if we're looking at him for the objective standard of right and wrong, we all fall short. So that's a good point. Hey, good, good job on there. After murdering 18 people, Jeffrey Dahmer's in heaven right now. Absolutely. Clip may be taken out of context. I'm not sure what, what the deal with that is. I don't think we should be saying who definitely is in heaven or who definitely is not in heaven. And that's definitely not my position. I don't know if he went to heaven or not. I think he did some sort of interview with Focus on the Family where he said, I believe Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior and stuff like that. So I think that's cool okay like you know great it's like when kanye not that kanye is a serial killer some people put them on the same level but it's like any popular person celebrity whatever says i'm a christian now okay like that's great but also like you don't know what's going on behind the scenes you get one interview you get two interviews and you know a lot of people are getting up and oh yeah let's go oh, man he's on our team now um yeah i just don't think we should be making those assertions and i don't think it's biblical to make those assertions who's going to heaven or who has went to heaven because you don't know. Now, I do think when people are in your life personally and they make a profession of faith, you should honor that and you should, you know, recognize them as a brother. You shouldn't, you know, be so questioning and be like, are you sure? I don't know. You know, it's like, okay, you know, evaluate the fruit and that's great. And you make a profession of faith. Okay, you're with me. You're one of my brothers. That's great. But I do totally get the draw of the story, man. If he did come to Christ at the last, you know, his last days, I mean, whatever, like that's crazy. That's a great testimony. Absolutely. This is a perfect example of how the teaching of heaven and hell in the evangelical church is so f***ed up. I think someone who murdered like 17 people can go to heaven and be rewarded for eternity because at the last second they confess Jesus as their savior, but someone could be completely good, only put love into the world their entire lives and burn for eternity in hell because they just don't believe in God. Oh, that's an interesting premise here. Okay, so you have Jeffrey Dahmer who's done all this bad stuff, like terrible, terrible stuff. I haven't really looked into it that much because I'm not big into the crime drama, serial killer space. That's not my jam. And I don't know, I'd be careful if you're a Christian to get caught up in that because that's kind of dark and, and dirty, honestly. So then you have him who's done all this wrong. And then at the last second, as she puts it, confesses Jesus as his savior. And then he goes, to heaven and then this other person who's just been good and just put love into the world and just such a nice person they go to hell why is this the case how could this be the case if god is truly good so she's putting forth her own standard of goodness she says that you know as long as person holds to this kind of standard of goodness then then they're a good person but who is she to define what that goodness is she claims that a person can be good according to her standard but what is goodness in a world without God? What is right and wrong? What is morality without an objective morality giver? It is all subjective. Like if you asked her if murder was wrong, she would say yes, unequivocally yes. But then you ask her, okay, a little bit more. How do you know that? Well, she's just, I know, you know, and then she might give a cultural argument. Well, it's culturally against, you know, the, the world that we live in. And it's just, it's just a wrong thing. Well, there's cultures where certain killing certain people isn't wrong. Is that still still wrong in that culture? And she'd be like, yeah, yeah, it's still wrong. It's always wrong. Well, she's holding on to some sort of moral standard. So it's not that atheists or people that deny God don't have this sense of morality. They do, but they deny the foundation that that's grounded upon. And in, mean, in the meantime, they actually distort it too. Her question really goes back to, is this fair? And for people that I talk to in person that bring up this question, how could, you know, this is a pretty common thing that people will bring up. How could God save this ax murderer at the last thing in his life and this person that was good all their life? Well, have you been good all your life? And they say, well, I've been trying to try to be a good person. Well, have you lied? Have you stolen? Have you coveted? Have you looked with lust? 
oh man, so you're, you're not actually as good as you portray yourself to be. And maybe you have this, you know, the standard of justice that and goodness that is based on your neighbor or the serial killer. And to them, you seem like a really good guy. But to God, who is infinitely holy and infinitely good and infinitely just, man, we all fall infinitely short. The problem is we compare ourselves to Jeffrey Dahmer and we're not comparing ourselves to God. When we look at Jesus, he took the punishment that we deserve for our sins against God on himself. He did that. As Ray Comfort says, we broke the law, but Jesus paid our fine in his life's blood. And that might not seem fair to you. You don't understand how God could die for somebody like that. No, you get why he could die for somebody like you because you're good, because you're nice. But we don't understand how he could die for somebody like that. It's yet we, we have yet to understand the goodness and the grace and the mercy of God. And we've also yet to understand the own depths of our own depravity. And this is not a system that an all-knowing, perfectly just God would create. Either God is an egotistical abuser or this is a man-made idea. And it's important with these things. Interesting. So how she's drawing her own standard. She says, this is not the way a good and just God would set things up. Really? You know? You know how God should set things up according to your personal standard of what is right and wrong? You know, you're really putting yourself at the judge's seat and looking at God and saying, God, you know, I don't think this is very good. I don't think this is very just. You're putting yourself as judge over God, which is not your place. Not only that, but we talked about earlier, man, without God, you have no objective standard for morality or goodness, and you're just kind of star stuff without God. You're physical, fizzing chemical reactions, and why are you so upset about these moral things if we're just animals at the end of the day? But you know you're not because you were created in the image of God. Made idea. And it's important with these things to think who benefits from a teaching like this. The church does. It creates a dependency on the church. They terrify you with the threat of hell, and they have the one key to get out of it. It's a control tactic. Second of all, the- Interesting, interesting. So she says uh, the church is the only one with the key. Um, bro, have you heard of the printing press? Have you heard of Martin Luther? Have you heard of the fact that we all have the word of God with us? It's not just this big, you know, organization that we have the keys and you need to oblige by what we say in order to unlock the keys to heaven. It's like, no, you can actually have the word of God yourself and read it for yourself. You know, this whole idea that it's all for control. And to me, it's just somebody that's not as connected with what Christianity actually is. They see it as some big cult where everyone is forced to kind of do the same things and say the same stuff and wear the same clothing. And maybe they're getting that confused with Mormonism. I don't know. But it's not a control thing. Maybe for some people it is. Some people distort it. Some people abuse. Some people, um, you know, mega church pastors and all this. I think we've heard enough of these stories to recognize that there's some people out there that will use it for their own benefit. But for the most part, man, we're all just trying to serve Christ. <laughs> so. Second of all, the white evangelical church cannot claim to be a welcoming environment for all and not have a racism problem when they take people like Jeffrey Dahmer, who targeted black and brown individuals specifically, and then hype it up as like an inspirational story to advertise their religion. Yeah, I win for Christ. What? What does that say about- Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, I'm just trying to follow her, pan her logic thinking here because it's a little bit challenging. Um, she's saying if we're claiming as a white evangelical church, I don't know what that even is because my church, we got all sorts of ethnicities. So maybe it's different in the United States. I don't, maybe it is. I don't know. In Canada here, we're very multi ethnic so kind of weird anyway but she says oh how could god forgive somebody like jeffrey dahmer and how could christians forgive somebody like jeffrey dahmer and say that he might have come to christ if he did all this mean stuff mean stuff that's okay putting it a little bit lightly he did all this terrible stuff to these people from different ethnicities and and all this and it's like yeah i get that but also like one of the principles of christianity is forgiveness and kind of this restoration and people repenting and turning to Christ. It's not like it's say, hey, we're approving of what somebody did in their past and saying that's all yippee skippy. It's like, no, you need to kind of repent from that and recant that stuff in your past and you're made into a new creation. Well, that was a ride. But, you know, at the end of the day, God can save anybody. I don't know if Jeffrey Dahmer is in heaven or he's not. And I think speculating about it isn't super helpful because we just don't know. But at the end of the day, uh, what I'm convinced of is our standard of goodness 
is often distorted and we will compare ourselves to other people claiming that we're good people when in actuality we're not. James 2.10 says that if we stumble at any point, we're guilty of all of it. Romans 3.23 says that we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But through Jesus, we can find forgiveness, restoration, and new life in him. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and got something from it. If you did, subscribe because I'm putting out new videos all the time. I'd love to see you over at the Daily Disciple Club on Patreon. There's exclusive videos as well as a Discord and a bunch of other stuff. It's a huge help to the mission of equipping people to follow Jesus daily. It's what I'm passionate about and you enable me to continue to do that. I will see you guys next time. God bless.